Hi, this is Keetron Evans, and I'm going to show you how to do a man in the middle attack. So what we see on the screen here is basically one of the victims that we're going to be doing a man in the middle attack against. And we have another victim here. Now, one of the things that we need to remember is anytime you visit a website, you do so by going out to a router or a gateway or something like that to get you out to the internet. And you primarily find the websites that you're trying to visit by uh, doing something called a DNS query, which is when you tell your DNS server that you're connected to, um, to put you in the right direction to go to the IP address of wherever you're trying to visit. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna be interrupting that process, putting ourselves in the middle so that when they request Facebook or whatever it is they're trying to get to, we're gonna lie to them and tell them that Facebook is somewhere that we want it to be and point them to our site that we control instead of them getting to the real Facebook. So let's dive right into it. First thing we have to do is we have to tell the victim, which is this machine, we have to tell it that we're the gateway, which is dot two, so that it will pass all those requests through us. The easy way to do that is something called art poisoning. So let me art poison. And I'm going to specifically tell the gateway, which is dot two, that I am the victim, which is 100. Now for man in the middle to work, remember you're in the middle or you're trying to get in the middle. So you can't just art poison one side of that equation. You have to art poison both. So now simultaneously, I'm going to art poison and tell the gateway, which if you're at home or at Starbucks, this gateway would essentially be your Wi-Fi router that we're uh, spoofing here. So now I'm gonna tell the victim that I am the gateway. So first ARP spoof, I'm telling the gateway that I'm the victim. The second ARP spoof, I'm telling the victim that I'm the gateway. This is part of what puts me in the middle. Both sides will now think I'm the other side. So I start my ARP poison and right away you can see the ARP going out and it's doing a reply, which is telling the 100 machine that I'm the gateway and it's also telling the gateway that I'm the 100 machine. So that's the art poisoning in motion and it's going every second. The reason it's going every second is because in a real network, every once in a while, the real machines would respond and say, wait a minute, I've got that IP address. So having this ARP happen every second guarantees that even if the real device responds, you immediately overwrite that response with your more recent response. Because in the land of ARP, the most recent reply is considered to be the truth. So the last step, once we've got the ARP poison going here to set up the infrastructure, is we have to make sure we turn on something called IP forwarding. And the reason for that is by default, your machine will simply drop packets that's not intended for it. Now in my case, my machine just has the IP forward turned off, which means it's gonna follow that behavior and all machines do that by default. What I wanna do is change that behavior because I am gonna be getting packets that are intended for our victim here. And since those packets aren't actually intended for me, my default behavior is to simply drop those packets, but I don't wanna drop them. I wanna go ahead and take them and pass them on. So I'm gonna change this IP forward from a value of zero to guess what? If it's zero is off, what do you think I need to change it to to turn it on? Exactly, you won, one. So I'm simply gonna write the number one into this file. and this will actually turn on IP forwarding. Now to prove to you that this is working, I'm not gonna write this yet, I'm gonna show you that currently 100, which is this victim, has trouble pinging dot two. And that's because the ping packet is never making it to the actual gateway. It's coming to my machine. And since my default behavior is a drop packet's not meant for me, and I'm clearly not dot two, that packet's getting dropped. But the minute I turn on IP forwarding, let's go ahead and turn that on. Now you're gonna see those pings are gonna end up being 100% successful.
And that's because now the ping is making it to the other side, but it's only making it there by coming through my interface first. So that means I've made myself a proxy or now I've completed and put myself in the middle. All right. The next part, how do we prove that and how can we do things? Well, there's a couple of tools that I want to show you on top of us being in the middle. First one is a special purpose sniffer called DriftNet. What DriftNet does is it is unique in that it grabs only images out of a victim's traffic. So if I run DriftNet, tell it to listen on interface six here. What you're gonna see in this little black window is whenever the victim visits websites, let's go do that. Victim goes out, goes to MSN, and some other places. Well, in that traffic are images. Well, guess what the attacker just grabbed? All of the images that were in that traffic has now been sniffed off by this attacker who's in the middle. So any images that you would have viewed during your browser session, the attacker is able to see those images now. Not only see them, but if I found one that I wanted to keep like this image here with this nice pie, I click that and it actually saves a local copy of that image so that I can go back and look at it and view it later. Now, if that's not creepy enough, let me show you how this really gets deep. So on top of the man in the middle and on top of the art poisoning, I'm gonna do one more thing called DNS cache poisoning. And what this means is whenever you go to a website such as Facebook, the first thing that happens is your machine sends a query to your DNS server saying, where is Facebook? What's Facebook's IP? Your DNS server responds back and says, here's the IP address for Facebook. Now, what I'm going to do is since I'm in the middle, I'm going to see that request and I'm going to respond on behalf of the actual DNS server and lie to you and tell you that Facebook is at my machine. Let's look at how easy that is. So I'm first going to create a file. We'll just call this MITM FB for Facebook. And I'm just going to say in there that Facebook is at my IP, which is 204. Save that little text file. And now I'm gonna run the tool DNS spoof. Point to that file that we just created. And now what's happening is anytime this tool sees a query for Facebook, it's gonna to respond to that machine that's asking for Facebook and lie to it and tell it that Facebook is at my IP. Let's go check the victim. See what happens now when the victim pings Facebook. So victim says, let's ping facebook.com. And it gets pings, but look at where it says the pings are coming from, 204. So we've successfully poisoned the art cache. Now we've successfully DNS cache poisoned them. So they can't even DNS look up Facebook without blindly trusting what we're telling it Facebook is. The last step of this is now I simply need to go out and make sure I have myself a nice clean copy of Facebook that looks just like Facebook, but actually has malicious code in it that will give me control of that victim's machine if they are to browse to my uh, particular copy of Facebook. This is also known as a client side attack against a browser that we're gonna use to do the actual exploit here. So that sounds complex. Let me show you how simple it actually is. I'm gonna load up a tool that's been around for a lot of years, uh, written by Dave Kennedy called the Social Engineers Toolkit. I'm going to pick one for social engineering, two for website attack vectors, and two again for browser exploit method. I'm gonna to go to site cloner. Gonna say no to natting. IP I want it to come back to, that's gonna be mine. Who do I wanna clone? Let's just say Facebook. And then I'm gonna use browser auto pawn because these hundreds of exploits up here are basically, depending on me knowing which browser the victims use, I don't know what browser the victim is gonna have because it could be different browser and OS combinations. So I'm gonna pick auto pawn, which means that when the victim hits my fake Facebook server, the server is going to look at that victim's get request 
and decipher what the browser and OS is and then send the appropriate exploit based on that. All right. I'm going to pick Meterpreter as my payload. In other words, if I'm able to exploit the machine, what do you want to get as your loot? I want a Meterpreter session so that I can take over the machine. Let the port stay 443 and now it's off to the races. It's going out, it's going to the default Facebook login page. As you can see there, it's cloning that, which means it's copying it down. Now it's putting the malicious code that I've crafted inside that fake Facebook copy. And now it's standing up a version of the exploit for every possible browser and operating system combination and storing them at a slightly different URL on my server. So when your browser hits this server, it's going to look at your browser version, look at your OS version, and then simply send the appropriate exploit based on that, which we're loading them all right here. Once this is finished, the only thing we have left to do is go play victim and see what happens when the victim simply does what the victim does every day and tries to go to Facebook. So we jump over, go to the victim, we open our browser, we load facebook.com in our browser, And at that point right there, it's game over. If we go back and look, what you see happening on the attacker side is the attacker now has a session. We connect to that session as the attacker. Take our obligatory screenshot here to prove that we have it. And at that point, we own that machine. It belongs to us completely. It's no longer that victims, it is ours. We can drop into a shell and it's all game over at that point. And that folks is what a man in the middle attack looks like and now you can see the actual devastation that can come from that.